hirelings welcome back so today we're going to be making a homemade soap it is a silky smooth recipe um, it's a little softer uh, than your regular homemade soap uh, let me go over what you're going to need to start so as far as equipment is concerned you're gonna need a large pot uh, this is for heating up your oils it needs to be stainless steel a ladle also stainless steel a mixing spoon also stainless steel a rubber spatula and a candy thermometer um, and over here your molds these are silicone molds that we're going to put our batch into for them to cure um, and as far as ingredients are concerned you're going to need olive oil you're going to need coconut oil argan oil uh, either filtered or distilled water we prefer the distilled water and of course lye now lye is a very strong base so you want to use some protective equipment maybe uh, be very careful when you're using lye and mixing it uh, in addition to that you're also going to need uh, a spray to spray the inside of the mold so that the soap slides out easier we prefer to use something a little more natural so this is a coconut spray uh, we have some co food coloring over here uh, so we're going to give it a little touch of color. And this is going to be a lavender soap. So we have some essential oil that we're going to add right at the end. And oh, last but not least, because I forgot to mention it at the beginning, we have a stick blender, which is vital for making soap. So uh, without further ado, we're going to start uh, making soap. So first thing you want to do is you want to get all of your ingredients over here, all of the oils, okay? Not the water, not the lye, not yet. And you're going to take all of that stuff and you're going to put it into your pot. So there goes the olive oil. And you're going to pour it in there. Make sure you get all of it out of there as much as possible. Get it all out. And the reason you want to get it all out of there is because the recipe calls for a specific amount of oil, which determines how much water and lye you use. So if you leave too much out, it's going to throw off the recipe. So go ahead and put all of that in there. And then next we're going to add our argan oil. Pour that right in there. Scrape it all out as much as possible. Get all that oil out of there. So you get nice clean. And then our coconut oil. Gently put it in there so we don't splash too much. Get it all out of there. So once we've got all of our oil, in the pot we're going to take it over to the stove and we're going to heat it up so that we can get all of that uh, coconut oil to melt and it mixes completely uh, so here we are just melting all of the oils you can see that the coconut oil is almost completely melted as soon as it melts completely, we're going to let it continue to heat until it gets between 100 and 110 degrees. You don't want it to go any higher than that because uh, you run the risk of burning the oil and you certainly don't need it much hotter than 100 and 110 degrees. So almost completely melted there. We've got it uh, on a medium heat right now. about 80 degrees so it's well, coconut oil is completely melted now there's not a, even a trace of it left just you took it out off the oil <laughs> Well, you don't want it sitting on the bottom either. No, we don't. We just want it in the oil. Do you have it sitting on the bottom now? No, it's not. Okay. 
degrees, shut off the heat, take it off the heat, because you don't want it to heat up any further than that. All right, so the next step is to mix the lye and the water. You never, ever, 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 ever want to pour the water into the lye. You want to pour the lye carefully and slowly into the water while you're mixing so that it dissolves completely. It is going to generate a lot of heat. This is a chemical reaction. So you want to be very, very careful about what you're doing so that you don't spill anything. Uh, don't get it on your skin. Don't breathe the fumes. So very, very slowly. Pour it into the water and mix it as you go so that it dissolves completely. Last little bit of lye that was in there. I'm gonna pour that in gently so as not to splash. And then I'm gonna pour it right back gently so as not to splash. And please make sure that you don't use the measuring cups that you use for this with anything else. Don't use it for food. Use it just for soap making. And there you go. Put this right in the sink and then we're going to mix this until it completely dissolves it's a little bit white right now but once it dissolves completely it should go clear and just like with the oil you want to get it to about a hundred and a hundred or 110 degrees so what is that that's about 130 or 125 125 so it's all it's almost 150 degrees right now so you want to let that cool a little bit before you pour it in and you can see that it's starting to turn clear and that means that the lye is completely dissolved and i don't know if you can tell but it is steaming slightly. Let's see. Leave that we'll in there. Put that in the sink. And put this right in the sink. Put some water in it. Okay. So once both of them have gotten to about 100 or 110 degrees, you're going to mix them together. You're going to mix the lye water and the oils together. See all of the oil is still in there. It's still nice and warm. Take the lye water. You're going to slowly pour it in. Try not to splash as you're mixing it. You can see it's starting to turn cloudy. Get that all in there. Now you could just mix it by hand until it gets to trace. cheat a little bit and we're going to use the, uh, the hand mixer to get it to where we need it to go where we need it to be get that out of there put it over here get the mixer start it on low and start mixing Thanks. 
starting to thicken up already. Do we need to add the food coloring and such now? No, nope, we've got to wait until it's almost that trace. That's when we add the food coloring and that's when we add the, the, the essential oil. So we're going to wait until it's almost ready to pour before we put that stuff in there. Nice, nice firm trace in there. So we should add what, the essential oil first? So we're gonna put in the essential oil, which is the lavender. I think that was six drops. Put in a little bit more. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 12. We're not going for a very heavy scent with this. Just a little bit. Yeah, a batch this size calls for half an ounce of uh, lavender oil. But half an ounce is this whole bottle and this thing is not cheap. So we're going for a more subtle smell. <laughs> At least for this batch. A little more. Uh, more a little more uh, gotta look around see where we can find the best price on decent quality lavender essential oil you can smell it already mm -hmm. you can smell the lavender coming out of it all right so now we're gonna try the food coloring it's turning brown <laughs> it's definitely turning brown it's not supposed to turn brown. It's not. I want blue. <laughs> You're not going to get blue. The soap will comply. Okay, as you can see, blue dye does not work that well so this is us playing around until we find ways that we like okay so it's it's, it's not an ugly brown but it is definitely a brown it looks like so, chocolate pudding yes a which, very light chocolate pudding which isn't bad not the color we wanted but it's not bad no nope. so stick with the yellow folks at least when it comes to this recipe All right, so now that we've gotten to the consistency we want, and it looks like chocolate pudding, chocolate pudding, we're gonna pour the mixture into our molds. So we're using a silicone mold, and getting the soap out of here is not a huge hassle, but I want it to slip out really easy when it's time to get it out. So we're gonna spray it with a little bit of coconut spray. Just a little bit to coat the sides, not too much. And now comes the pouring part. And there it goes. Not too bad. Let's get everything out of there. Be careful not to get that stuff on your skin. Like I said, there's still a lot of light that's active in the mix. I'm trying to do this with one hand, it's not easy. There we go, you hold that side. I'll hold this side. <laughs> All right, so forgive the angle, folks, and the drawing around. This is me helping. As much of it out of there as you can. Oops. Spit 
a little down the side, but that's okay. That can get scraped off as it dries. Yep. Even it out. I actually have to stick it in there and so we get a nice smooth. There we go. Ta-da. Ta-da. Then you put the lid on. I'm spray the lid as well. Because I don't want it to stick to the lid. But as you can see, it's not a bad brown. No, it's not. So what you want to do is you want to put it in there, cover it up, and wrap it up in a towel mm -hmm. so that uh, it stays insulated and it can cure and we'll be back in a couple of weeks and just one other thing this lid is loose so we take a couple of rubber bands and put it on either end um if he wants to go ahead and add those that way the lid stays tight on there and it doesn't shift but just like so because you want a good seal On there. Put this on here. And that's it. So now I'm gonna wrap it up in a couple of towels and put it in uh, somewhere nice and safe out of the sunlight. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks and take it out of the soap and see what soap mold and see what it looks like. So then stay tuned. Welcome back. So it's been a couple of days since we finished making this soap. Uh, so today we're going to take it out of the uh, mold here and have the big review. So it's not going to be ready even though we take it out of the mold. Oh, it's stuck a little bit to the lid. Uh, I think we're going to use some uh, wax paper to cover the top next time we do this. Uh, it's not going to be ready even though we're going to take it out of the mold. It's still going to have to sit and cure for probably another week. And then we'll cut it and it'll have to cure for another week or so until it dries completely and it hardens properly. Right now it's still a little bit soft. It is supposed to be a softer soap. Uh, but we'll go ahead and uh, get it out of there so we can see what it looks like. It came out a nice shade of purple actually. So that nice chocolate looking muddy brown turned into a pretty purple soap. It did and it goes very well with the lavender scent that we put in there. You can still smell it a little bit and just remember we didn't put that much in there should have you know for a recipe this big we needed to put a lot more but you can still smell it so let's get it out of there gently and carefully dum, dum, dum. let's see what it looks like peel it away peel it away a little bit it did stick to the mold somewhat, but it is silicone mold, so it's not a huge deal. It's still very wet in there. And it would have stuck more had we not used the spray that we did. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be, I don't wanna, cause it's a very soft soap. I don't wanna squeeze it too hard to get it out of there. Mm. Maybe a little more difficult than I anticipated. Oh, 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 come on, come on, come on, you can do it. Gently now. And ta da! But yeah, definitely soft. And look at the purple on this. That is like. I'd say that's almost what, like an eggplant purple? Yep, like an eggplant purple or royal purple. That but is pretty. You can see but it, you can see it's really soft. Yep. So this way. Yeah, it's still very Like the end pieces, you usually don't really get much off of them anyway. Yeah, it's but, still very soft, but. But this way. Leave it 
that side up like that. So this way it'll go. dry. And then in about in a few days, we'll check it again, see if it's dry enough. Then we'll cut it and we'll lay it on its flat so it fully dries. But stay tuned and we'll show you more when it's ready. Hey, so we're back. It's been a couple of weeks now and we're ready with the soap, the uh, lavender soap that we made. Uh, so I've got my little cutting jig over here. And um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shave off the sides a little bit to make it a little more square. Cause you can see it's a little lumpy and bumpy on the surfaces, just the top. I'll take off this ledge over here cause it's indented a little bit just to make it nice and flat before I cut it. So it's still a softer soap uh, than the first one that we try to make. Still smells like lavender. Um, it's a nice block, uh, so we're going to cut it right now um, and see what it looks like. So this is the jig that I have, and the cool thing about this jig uh, is that it has a little cutting blade, a little level blade right inside of it, sort of like the ones that you use to uh, shave off wood. And the soap runs across the surface and shaves off. Smooth. You can see, I'm not going to take off too much, but stuff over here like this, you want to save that because you can uh, mix it in a different batch so that doesn't go to waste. So shave off that side, make it nice and flat, shave off this side. It's not going to be perfect because, you know, homemade soap and all, but shave off this side a little bit. And there we go. It smells pretty nice, actually. Not a very strong smell of, uh, of uh, lavender because we didn't put a lot in it, but it does smell really nice. So now, we're going to cut the soap, put it over here. I've already got the jig set over here for the size of the bars that I want. And I'm going to put it right there up against the front, press it up so it's nice and flat. And then using my little blade over here, slide it in and our first bar. Of course, this one, I didn't do the end, so it's a little holy there. But you can see the end of the soap is nice and flat, nice and square. Push that up again, nice and tight against the end. And then line that up. And another bar. Messed that one up a little bit, so it's going to be a little bit thicker than the other ones, but you can see how it's a little hard to line it up perfectly because the bar is so high. So I kind of eyeball it and then get it into the groove. That one's a little better. Well, the first one screwed it up, so there we go. I mean, every bar is going to be slightly different size. Not a lot, but slightly different size. And that's because we use this jig to make these big bars. If we had the small molds, every bar would be exactly the same. But making it like this is a lot more, right now anyway, cost effective. Because we only have to have one mold to make multiple bars. Um, if we start making a lot of these, then we might get the individual molds. Almost there. And the 
last bar. Dum, dum, dum. And there it is, last bar. And this is the front of it and the back of it, the, the back of the, the block that we made. So what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna lay them out on a piece of paper and we're gonna let it cure for another week. We're gonna turn it every couple of days so that uh, it dries on both sides because the inside is still a little tacky, but the outside is nice and dry. These we're gonna save and use it for a different soap uh, that we make later on. Or we might just put these in uh, using the stick blender and make some hand soap um, so that it doesn't go to waste. So. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. If you did, like, uh, subscribe, share, comment, uh, check us out on Patreon, we have a link below. Um, and help us out uh, if you want to, so you can see more of uh, content like this. So, have a good one, bye Shirelings!